Israel trying to advance their economic and security relations. Philippe Lacour is a visiting fellow at the Brookings Institution. I spoke to him earlier and asked him to outline the key topics on the agenda. Well, uh, Federica Mogherini, she's the high representative for uh, uh, international relations for, for the European Commission. She's the vice president of the European Commission, former uh, Italian foreign minister. And, and basically, she's coming to Beijing to discuss, to prepare the ground, to pave the ground for the um, uh, summit, EU-China summit that is taking place in June. So obviously, EU-China relations that are about trade, um, um, investments, um, uh, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank will probably be discussed. But I can see a difference this time with a foreign policy chief that is trying to uh, discuss with the, her Chinese counterparts, especially the state councillor Yang Jieshi, uh, the um, you know security and crisis and things like that, which are fairly new for the European Commission to to discuss with China. Honestly, 2014 was a year for basically a new vision for this relationship. How do you see it uh, prospering, developing over time? Well, obviously, the AIB has been an interesting development, and China is, is uh, uh, hoping uh, or claiming to, to be developing a, a new Silk Road all the way to Europe. So there are lots of plans to, for uh, economic cooperation. The, uh, the trade relationship is, is uh, enormous. Uh, there are more uh, Chinese in investments in, in, in Europe and still a, a heavy uh, European presence in China. Now, in terms of uh, uh, foreign policy and, and, and uh, handling crises, uh, and there are many of them uh, all over the world, um, uh, in Africa, in the Middle East, and, and um, uh, you know, uh, Central Asia in, in some ways, um, perhaps and, uh, China and, and, the, and, and Europe could work together. But the problem is, you know, uh, is it the European Union or is it the countries that have a strong military? Uh, for example, France and the UK. Um, now, the EU as itself doesn't really have an army. It would like to have an army, but, you know, it, it, it is a complicated matter when it comes to putting together a, a peacekeeping force or things like that. So it would come under the UN umbrella or uh, NATO sometimes. Now, obviously, NATO is a different setup. And, and occasionally under the EU umbrella. And I think that's what uh, Federica Mogherini is going to discuss with uh, uh, her, her counterparts. Let me ask you about uh, the, the relationship. How does it develop beyond uh, the core trade pacts? Uh, is this something that takes time? Uh, is this laying the groundwork for that? I know you're talking about the summit in June. Um, what are we like to, likely to see in terms of those steps? Well, we are celebrating uh, the, the 40th anniversary of the uh, diplomatic relationship between uh, the European Union and, 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 and the PRC. Now, having said that, uh, you know, um, uh, the EU has 28 countries, and, and most individual countries also uh, have their own relationship with, uh, with, uh, with China. So, but, but I think China understands very well uh, how to make a difference between the European institutions in Brussels and, and each individual country. For example, in the field of defense that we were referring to, uh, they know that France and Britain are the two strongest uh, countries in Europe. Um, in, in terms of economics, of course, Germany uh, comes first. And then, you know, in Brussels, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, very important people that are called European commissioners. And China knows very well that the European commissioner for competition or for financial services or uh, industries. I mean, these people, uh, or the environment, I should, I should mention, the, the, the Paris Climate Conference is coming up, you know, uh, later this year. So all these uh, relationships are important to China. And, and you know, by and large, uh, they understand, if they want to do business with Europe, that 60 percent, uh, at least, of the regulations that are in place in Europe are actually uh, decided in Brussels by the European Commission, the European Parliament, and above all, the European Council.